Ho Ho. Burnley is a name for Bleach's defensive movement techniques. You use them in a rather interesting way in this game. This is a dashing out of guard. Okay, here's a regular dashing. It also counts as a hit. Cool thing about them is that out of every single normal, yes, they gave her Vegito legs in this game, uh, you can cancel them into a dash or a guard dash. Hell, you can cancel the regular dashing into the guard dashing. And if you have really cat groove fingers, you can cancel all of that into the dash jump. That's the only way to jump cancel out of normals. You level this up, by the way, in a giant level up tree. So the game tells you that this is kinda important, or should have been important. That's still the only way to avoid the unblockable supers in this game, or do some kind of a whip punishment that kinda makes the movement look really slick at times. But that's assuming you decided to play the game the way it was intended, which is not something that you do, because... Do you see, like, a row of enemies running up to this man as grande? Well, if you simply do the dash guard dash jump cancel that I told you about earlier, you can do a special move that is loopable, that kills them all in one swoop. And I'm playing on a very hard difficulty. To be fair, I noticed that it certainly does get to a point where just mashing in this game or pressing buttons does not work without you receiving enormous amount of damage or simply dying with the condition that you're playing on very hard. Normal difficulty is certainly a mash through. I need to sharpen my skills. But that is a lyrical duration. What I meant to follow up with was that getting in the air is both strong and weak at the same time because you cannot block in the air and doing a special move in the air usually means that the combo has ended. Not for this character though, because despite the enormous amount of distance that is made, she's going to raise her hand and snipe you all the way from Waco Mundo to the depths of your Quincy Hurt box. And this is not even her main gimmick. I think they wanted to give her a just frame, but then realized that this is a kid's game and gave her this. You cannot cancel it into anything, and there are three different outcomes. First one, she gets tired. That means that you have overmashed. You can mash the button. The second one is a short and sweet type. You do the combo that I showed you before, but instead of doing an air special move, you do a dash cancel that I talked about earlier and uh, reground yourself into doing this much less punchery but nicely damaging barrage. And the third version is bonkers. It's somewhere in the middle between barely mashing and mashing a lot. Massive damage, since you're rolling all the way to the Soul King's palace. You see a zoom in, big ass hurricane punch that reminds me a lot of Soifon's Mukyu Shunko. Soifon is kinda wild in this game. Uh, they decided to give her a highly stunning Chun Li legs that lead into the Bakudo 30 loop. So each time you do these kicks, they spring the opponent a little bit higher. But you have a double jump, so you can do this a lot. But it's not an infinite. It is somewhat of a TOD because the combo ends in a mark. And the mark allows you to do one more special, and the special leads into the super finisher where she sits on you like a cabaret girl, says something kinky, and then the finisher. Looks pretty cool. You might think that it's OP, but it's not OP, because most of the time in this game there are a lot of opponents, or more than one opponent, and they keep interrupting your amazing loop. And if you're using tools that are meant for multiple attackers, then you can't combo. This is uh, more of a 1v1 oriented character with a nuke. There are characters that don't suffer from any of these drawbacks, one of them being Shunsui. He's flippity cheap. He's just cheap. Has a tight infinite, even without the awakening mode, and in awakening mode, characters get a lot of benefits, like longer stun time from the attacks, and uh, some specific benefits, like Shunsui can do this. Ooh, hurricane! But in awakening mode, it turns into a Shibuyan and some Aizens diabolically benefit from this type of change, but a little bit later about that. In Kyoroku's case, a basically a full-screen Shippuden attack sucks you in, you can do an aerial follow-up, which you can dash cancel, and everything next is guaranteed. I really enjoy this aspect of wide range that gives you no worries about how many opponents there are, allowing you to complete your combo regardless. So naturally, I decided to try out the character with the furthest reach next. Logically, that should be a gun wielder. So I picked Ginichimaru. It seems like, oh, due to abilities of his sword, he probably just has long range. But no, they gave him a gun. 
he's also a stance character. He's a stance character in a kid's game, where you're a rematch. They gave him a stance, dudes. The stance on his inside of the combos to OTG and wall splat. That in turn leads into the ultimate, which also wall splats, if somehow that did not kill. Which usually it kills. And that's not as cool as Aizen. Still not as cool as Aizen. My man can't run, only walk. Has a triple jump, and while in air can summon a ball. In awakening mode, he summons three balls. Never did it in the anime, they just kinda gave him this ability, and it improves his combo game so much to the point where he has a, a setup to his Hado 90, which I have never. I, I wonder why no game ever repeated that. His now Hado 90 leads into another Hado 90. He juggles with it. Can you believe this shit? He juggles with it. And even without his balls, Aizen still has another set of balls in form of Raikoho, which he can use either to extend combos or to OTG, or both, just to OTG into Super. I'm here doing it on a Movie 4 Hell Super Duper Ichigo that had 70% health, and he dies from it. He dies from this combo. And I didn't even use the main balls. Another cool thing is that uh, in his boss battle, Yoruichi has a setup which leads to her stomp being an unblockable. You cannot block it. And usually all other AI avoid it, but Aizen directly goes into it all the time. As if on purpose. It becomes a character specific infinite. I think I'll say a couple of words on the main character as well. His uniqueness is that he can combo out of his parry. Lots of stun time which you use to awaken in the middle of the combo. And you do it for a higher stun. So that even if AI uses recovery, it still gets sucked straight into your combo. That gives him just enough advantage to do a micro step into Gensuga into heavy special into ultimate. <laughs> oh my god, I barely say it. After his air combo, all of which is guaranteed. Wish he could have done even more, but ultimately the game plan is to jump and do this one special move that everybody does. Which brings us closer to a plot twist of this video. You see, despite adding all these cool ideas and mechanics into the characters, despite giving you the incentive to use these abilities by adding the DMC-like ranking system, the combo meter, the talent rate that tells you, oh, you can do this, Someone flarked up and made a mash mash AI that makes it difficult to use all of these things. AI would randomly escape target combos that are impossible to drop, or would die in two hits. And instead of taking these ideas and throwing them out of the window, they just went with it. They rolled with it. To be fair though, it worked very well in one instance, and that's uh, the final Aizen boss fight. That was pretty good, but mostly it doesn't work. And because of that, if I had to give some final result or an overview of this combat system, I would say something very contradictory. I do not recommend this game. It was hell to level up all of these characters. It took days, days to figure out and showcase these basic mechanics via rare sequences, because AI refuses to cooperate with any deviation from mash, 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 mash. Traumatize me forever, holy flipping shit. Put sick stuff, don't make it work, what the fuck. Do not buy it, do not play it. But, if developers or somebody asks you what do you think about this game, say that you loved it, that you want part 2, that that was the best flipping game you have ever played, but it had some, uh, s s some issues, but, but you really liked it. <laughs> Why would I say something like this? Well, because... With just minor adjustments to AI, to leveling system, adding less characters but more moves to each character, investing in them, this could have been the best hack and slash anime related game to this date. Also keep in mind that this is not a game review, I'm just overviewing and showing you rare stuff in the combat system. However, I think devs have proved that they can do something really good. And that deserves a chance for a second game. But if they screw up the second time, this is it. Mugetsu the entire team. The end.